afternoon, everybody. Thank you for um, making it to this uh, this school meeting. Um, I thought just before I introduce the kind of main part of this meeting, I just thought it might be useful to rehearse a few numbers with you, um, just to give you a sense of kind of where we are um, and what we're dealing with at the moment. Um, cautiously good news is that the, the numbers of students um, with COVID appear to have peaked and are, are coming down quite rapidly. Um, in the faculty we had at the beginning of October, we were running at about 150 reported a day. Um, yesterday was six, the day before was three. Um, so uh, that that appears to be um, grounds for, for cautious optimism. Although, of course, you know we need to be very careful with with PGT students um, arriving on the ground um, this week and, and next um, to make sure that that doesn't drive another spike. Critically, that the the, um, the reductions in in numbers of infections were, were coming down um, before we moved to tier three. Um, so this this looks like um, something to do with changes in, in student behavior um, outside of the campus rather than um, anything to do with uh, with teaching. And we still don't have um, any evidence of um, on-campus transmission, um, which is which is also positive, I think. Um, I guess the, the other set of numbers that we've all been concerned about for the last six months are um, student numbers in terms of recruitment and students arriving. Um, we are more or less at target for undergraduate students and, and they've we've been teaching them for a couple of weeks. Um, that's positive. PGT students obviously are arriving basically this week. Um, that's also looking cautiously optimistic at the moment. Um, we are in terms of people that are showing up at induction sessions, we're looking like we're 10 or 20 percent over target. Um, I imagine that we will lose some of those, um, but nevertheless, I think again, there's, there's grounds for cautious optimism that, that we might have something close to, to full classes. Um, I also recognise that there's there's a risk that that um, that we are overfull that we over recruit in places and I know several areas of the school are, are kind of feeling that pressure and, and running that risk and um, we've got we've got adverts out at the moment for senior tutor posts in a number of um, areas of the school um, that we will fill if we are particularly under pressure in, in some of those areas. Um, the other set of numbers I guess that we're all um, thinking about at the moment are the various tiers. So the, the university is currently at tier three. Um, as you know, um, the university leadership team is, is looking to review that on Friday um, with a view to making a change or not making a change from um, a week after that. Um, I honestly don't know how that will go, um, but the, the other kind of relevant to a number of courses that any minute now we're probably expecting to hear that Greater Manchester has gone from national tier two to national tier three, um, which will have probably limited implications for the university if, if we stay um, at tier three um, at um, within the university tiers. <coughs> um, but nevertheless has, has implications for um, other areas of our lives. So um, those I'm afraid are, are still watch this space, um, but we expect there's potential for both of those, those tiers to evolve over the next uh, few days. Um, we had today's open meeting in the diary um, for a couple of weeks into the undergraduate teaching term so that we could review how face-to-face -face teaching was going under these um, weird circumstances that we've been dealing with. Um, clearly, we only managed face-to-face -face teaching for a couple of days before we moved a substantial larger proportion of it online. Um, so the plan for today's meeting is um, obviously an opportunity for you to ask questions of the, any of the school leadership team um, and if we have got feedback on a couple of days of face-to-face -face teaching, that, that's useful to share. 
Um, but we thought that probably the most important thing to focus on was some of the implications of moving to tier three. Um, tier three for students means that um, they're getting very significant reductions in, in the amount of face-to-face -face teaching that they can expect. Um, and, and that obviously requires us to, to step up the amount of virtual contact we have with them in, in order to ensure that they're engaging with their studies and, and um, to look after their well-being. Um, so that's one of the themes um, for today is student engagement and student well-being. Um, and the other one, I guess, we, we thought was just to think a little bit about staff well-being as well. We're all six months into this. Um, it's still changing by the hour. Um, we expect more change to come. Looks like we're going to be in this until well after Christmas. Um, and so, you know, this has been a really challenging time for, for all of us. And so um, we're going to spend a little bit of time on staff well-being as well. So um, we've got a number of presentations uh, to start with. Um, so uh, I'm delighted that Gemma Dale, who is UOM HR, um, but also a lecturer at uh, John Moore's University, um, has joined us to talk about well-being, which is one of her a specialist areas, staff well-being. Um, and then uh, Liz and Janice uh, and student well-being. Uh, David's going to make a few points about uh, online learning and Helen Perkins for our e-learning team is also with us to uh, um, help answer questions on that. Um, and we'll, we'll do the three or four presentations back to back up front, I think. Hopefully that'll just take 15 or 20 minutes and leave us um, a good half hour to pick up questions on any of those topics, following up any of those presentations or on anything else that you want to ask anybody on the call. Okay, um, so Gemma, if you're ready to go, you're first up, thank you. Thank you. Uh, I'm just going to try and share my screen if that's okay. Hopefully everybody can uh, can see that. Um, uh, first of all, thank you for um, inviting me to come and talk to you today. Um, what I'm mainly going to do today um, is highlight the provision at the university for wellbeing. Um, there's a lot uh, and I often think that not everybody quite knows everything that is there and available to them. Um, but I just want to echo, if I may, the points that have already uh, been made, which is um, many of us, we went home um, from campus in, in, in March. Um, and I'm not sure many of us thought we would necessarily uh, still be at home with many more months uh, potentially to come. Um, we are, you know, I say we're six months into this, some of us still... Uh, challenged with things like childcare and wraparound care and, and, and balancing care. We're also working with those stresses of um, living and working through a global pandemic and watching the news and, and also at the same time facing darker nights, um, shorter days and, and, and less good weather. So what a cheery way to start um, this session. Um, I think what what we, we are very cognizant of this as a university and what we want to try and do is, is make sure that there is a well-being offer there for our staff, whatever it is um, that well-being means to you. And, and well-being is generally unique and personal. What drives and enables and supports mine uh, will be very different to many of you on this call. Um, and sometimes what you know what detracts from one person's well-being will support another. So we're trying to make sure we've got what you need. Um, I, what I would say is we we're always open to, to suggestions. So if there are things that you think after this presentation today, we're not doing enough of, if there are subjects you would like us to, to address and, and to cover, you are absolutely uh, welcome to, uh, to contact me and, and we'll take that forward. So um, let, me just, let me just start by running through what actually is available. Um, the wellbeing offering, at the university is, is essentially split into sort of three parts. Uh, we've got the, the sport, so uh, supporting people's physical health. Um, we've got the staff wellbeing team, and then we've got the counselling service, which is around supporting your mental health. 
Uh, so UOM Sport, uh, they went virtual in March. Um, they have made a brief return to some face-to-face -face outdoor exercise, but obviously still doing um, a lot of things um, online. I'll show you their latest uh, in a moment. Um, but sort of in, in, you know, when campus is fully open, they also uh, organise things like the Purple Wave, uh, running groups, walking groups, and, and, and a whole range of other things besides including all the various memberships and, um, uh, and, and sports centres that people can access. Um, so they are doing a really, really good online offering at the moment. We've then got all of the various webinars uh, and um, lectures and, and other things that the staff wellbeing team run. I'll touch in a moment on some of what uh, is coming up um, over the next weeks or a few weeks and months. And then we've also got the counselling service. So the counselling service is there to support people who um, really do need some support around their mental health because they're not feeling great or um, feel that they need some help uh, maintaining good um, mental well-being. Um, so if I can um, just touch on a few of the different things uh, that are going on across these three different areas. Uh, so what you can see in front of you at the moment is the um, the sport provision that's running currently uh, and that's separated into some things that are face to face and socially distanced um, and some that are running online so anything you can see in blue uh, is zoom uh, really easy to get to uh, they live uh, stream them and they've got a back catalogue as well so if you literally just went over to youtube uh, and typed in UOM Sport, you'll find a really big back catalogue. I actually did a Pilates class last night um, that was filmed a couple of months ago uh, by Gail, who's one of our fantastic uh, uh, Pilates instructors, and I realised quite how unfit I'd got during the course of lockdown. Um, so um, uh, there's, a, there's, a, there's a great offering there, and, and they're organising other things as well. They turned the, uh, the Purple Wave virtual uh, this year. So um, probably the best place to connect with them uh, is their social media feeds. So keeping you physically active. Um, the sort of staff wellbeing team, there's a whole range of different uh, things online, uh, including you can see our uh, colouring for relaxation. Uh, for those of you that want to do a bit of adult colouring or indeed print it off and give it to your children to keep them quiet for a little bit. Um, but it, just one example of a whole range of different things that are on the staff wellbeing pages. We run live events and I'll come on to some of the ones that are coming up in a moment, but there's also loads of content there for you to connect within your own time. So for those who would just prefer to do something, um, uh, you know, when, when it suits them, we've got a big range of videos and lectures on there on everything from how to work on your sleep routine and get a really good night's sleep, to positive psychology, to mindfulness, to fitness. Um, we've got a range of other videos on there around if you're worried about somebody, how to perhaps have a conversation with them about mental health. Some of these resources are particularly useful for those of you that are people managers. Um, and you'll also find on there a, a range of all of our current activities that are coming up. Um, and that link um, that you can see embedded, which I know will be circulated to you afterwards, has a news feed. So the quickest, simple way to find out everything that's coming up uh, is just clicking onto, uh, onto that news feed. The other thing that you can access um, through that team um, are some co is, is coaching. So um, some of that is um, working through materials, again, self-directed and a whole range of modules. You can see some of them here on topics like mindfulness, managing stress, improving your focus um, and so on. Um, we also do offer some one-to-one -one coaching. So this is managed through our staff learning and development team. But we have a number of our coaches that are uh, specifically qualified to coach people around well-being issues. So if you are finding work-life balance really difficult at the moment, um, or even perhaps you've um, been away from work and, uh, and you haven't been well and you're coming back, um, we have people who are specifically qualified to coach you around those areas. So for anybody who thinks, I'm not in a space where I need to go to the counselling service, but I could just do with a bit of a one-to-one -one conversation, that, that is available. Um, and you can find the links on that. 
um, on uh, the document that will be sent around afterwards. Uh, but a bit about what is coming up. So we, we're trying to offer a range of, of webinars and activities um, to support health in general, but also with a real where appropriate COVID lens and supporting people through this time. Um, so we've got some men's health stuff coming up because November is men's health month. Um, what I will say to all of the men um, uh, on uh, this uh, call today, um, we often struggle to get our male colleagues to events um, around their health. Uh, when we're on campus. So I'm going to see if it's any different if we're online, but it's for anybody as well. It's for all staff. So even if you are wanting to support uh, somebody else with uh, with their health, then do do please come along. Uh, I promise you, you can keep your cameras off and uh, there won't be any sort of going to breakouts and talk about your health or anything like that. Tomorrow, uh, if you happen to be free tomorrow, just after lunchtime, we've got a wellbeing lecture. We used to have a monthly wellbeing lecture when we were on campus. Uh, and we're bringing them back um, virtually. So this is all about managing your mindset um, and, uh, and trying to manage your mindset positively and deal with um, any sort of negative uh, thoughts um, that creep in from time to time. Uh, so still space is available on that for tomorrow. Um, and next week, uh, just jumping ahead, is a webinar targeted towards um, carers and parents who are struggling to find some balance. So just some tips on um, finding some good balance um, in these, uh, these challenging times. Um, and then the, the one that's in the middle, well-being through winter, to the point that you know, I, I made earlier, which is, um, uh, you know, it's going to get a bit colder, it's going to get a bit darker. And we've all been doing this for about seven months now with quite a few to come. So in the next week or so, we're going to be launching a webinar series about how you can uh, maintain your personal well-being uh, throughout um, the next uh, few months to come. And then finally, uh, my colleagues over in Staff Learning and Development uh, are running uh, a number of dates throughout November and December about building your resilience for change, obviously in an ever-changing context, which we've also mentioned. Uh, and you can see the links there uh, where you'll find all of these seminars for booking if you would like to. Uh, and then finally, just uh, a mention for my colleagues over in the counselling service. Um, so for those people who do feel that they need some, some additional help at this time, one-to-one uh, -one counselling is available. They obviously are triaging uh, to make sure that they can support the people who are most in need at this time. Um, so there is, a, there is a little form to fill in um, about what you're experiencing in your signs and symptoms, um, and then they will direct you accordingly. Uh, but so that is, um, that, that counselling is obviously uh, running virtually at the moment. They also run a series of workshops, and I just did a little quick um, uh, screenshot yesterday of, of some of the ones that are coming up, um, but these are running continually. Um, some of them are uh, staff, uh, some of them are students, some of them are mixed, um, but you can see there's some of the different things um, that they are offering and some of them are just really nice simple guided meditation. So if you need to find uh, a little moment of calm or peace in your day, uh, joining some of their relaxation sessions um, or their mindfulness sessions um, are highly recommended. I have done a couple of them myself uh, and found myself very chilled afterwards. Um, so all of their, uh, their services are available on, on the link you can see. But they also have um, another service. So I, I'm conscious that um, not everybody wants to go to uh, a webinar or um, not everybody wants to join something um, with their colleagues. Um, so uh, the Together All platform is, is something slightly different. It is an online community. Um, it is designed um, around peer-to-peer -peer support. So there are groups in there where people will share tips and, um, and chat, but you can be entirely anonymous there. But it is uh, regulated and supported by mental health professionals. And there's all sorts of things on there as well. Um, Self-guided um, tools and resources, podcasts, videos, all sorts of things to help you think through your well-being, um, how you are and how you can continue to um, stay well in the current time. 
So there's quite a lot. Um, I'm just going to flick back to the slide um, about what's coming up just to encourage you possibly to come along um, to at least something that's happening um, over the next month or two. Um, so I'm going to pause there. I think we're taking questions um, at the end. Uh, as I said, the link is on here um, and I'll, I'll go and find it in a moment and post it in the chat as well, uh, just so that if people want to book for the um, event tomorrow, they can do so. Um, but all I would do in this time is obviously um, to encourage you to think about your own well-being, uh, to continue to make it a focus. Um, many of our staff are doing amazing work and putting in amazing effort. Uh, and we thank them for that, but um, would like to remind you to take care of you two along the way. Thank you. Thank you, Gemma. That's great. Okay, we're going to move on. Uh, is it Janice or Liz next? Janice, there we go. <laughs> yeah, okay. Um, sorry, I'm just going to share a document uh, with everybody. Um, Okay, um, I'm just going to talk through um, just our uh, student engagement monitoring processes, um, which we um, have been running since March this year um, and run across um, sort of all the undergraduate and postgraduate top programmes. Um, the um, process came into play um, earlier on this academic year um, when we um, were fortunate enough to recruit Rashid and Rebecca to the student support and guidance team. Um, as our student support and engagement officer and student support and engagement administrator and I've been working with them closely on, on a number of initiatives. Um, part of their job role um, is to work with um, data sets to identify groups of students um, to proactively target um, for further support. Um, so for example, students who appear to be failing, um, students who are not engaging um, with their programme. Um, the University um, has developed a Power BI app, um, which allows us to identify um, any students who haven't been engaging with Blackboard over a particular time period. Um, so earlier this year, Rashid and Rebecca developed a process um, for following up on um, students who haven't been engaging and they rolled this out um, across all of our programmes. Um, so Rashid has been covering geography and MIE um, and Rebecca has been covering GDI um, and planning. Um, so students who are not engaging are system systematically followed up by email um, and then um, cases are escalated if the non-engagement um, continues and um, we involve academic advisors in that process. Um, so the, the process allows um, the student support and guidance team to connect with students who might be struggling um, to reach out and offer pastoral support um, in a proactive way before the students reach crisis point or drop off the, um, the radar. Um, it also allows us to um, pick up on students who might need um, study skills support, language skills support, IT um, support and refer them on um, as appropriate. Um, following the lockdown um, in March this year, um, the engagement monitoring processes um, superseded our face-to-face -face attendance monitoring processes once all the teaching moved online um, and continues to, um, to do so. Um, the process is designed to be supportive, um, you know, not punitive in any way, and uh, it's very much a case of us reaching out to students and, and offering support um, rather than, you know, telling them off. Um, for, for not um, engaging with Blackboard. Um, more recently, um, in October, um, the faculty um, have taken ownership of the engagement monitoring processes um, sort of due to the move to online teaching, um, the COVID situation, um, and as many of you will probably be aware, there was a recent student death in um, one of our halls of residence. 
Um, so that has required um, a slightly more stringent approach to engagement monitoring to make sure all our students are, are well. Um, so the current approach then is um, has been agreed by faculty um, and will be in place for at least October and possibly beyond um, if online teaching continues. Um, it's a cyclical process um, and Rashid and Rebecca are carrying out checks every seven days, um, looking back at the last um, week. Um, the entire process takes about two weeks to complete once we've kind of followed up and done all the relevant checks. Um, and academic advisors will be key um, in this process, given their ongoing contact um, with students. So Rashid and Rebecca will be contacting academic advisors to check in with them to see if, if they've had any um, contact with students. Um, just to run you um, quickly through the actual process itself. Um, So Rashid and Rebecca will be pulling a report at the start of the week, um, which um, highlights any students who haven't engaged with Blackboard um, over the past seven days. Um, they will cross-check this with a list of identified, they'll cross-check this list of identified students with our COVID reports. Um, and alongside this, we've been doing welfare checks on any students who have reported to us that they're either self-isolating or they have tested positive for COVID. So that process is kind of running alongside this one. Um, Rashid and Rebecca will then email students um, and asking for a response by uh, lunchtime on Thursday. Um, if no response has been received, um, they'll then send a text message um, to students who haven't responded, um, just asking them to have a look at the original email. Um, when it gets to Friday, if we still had no contact with the student, Rashid and Rebecca will then phone the student um, to offer help and support. Um, if nothing, um, if we've still had no contact um, by the end of the week, um, Rashid and Rebecca will then refer that case on to the academic advisor um, to check in with them and, and see if they've had any contact with the student. And if not, um, they'll ask the academic advisor to, to get in touch. Um, by the middle of the second week, if, if we've still had no contact with the student, um, the academic advisor will have to refer the case back to the student support and guidance team um, so that we can then consider um, what further action we, we might need to take. Um, Rashid and Rebecca will also check back against the Power BI report because it might be that a student has then engaged within that checking time period um, and will know that they, they have actually um, sort of been okay. Um, if it, if um, during the second week um, we've still had no contact with the student, we will then need to consider um, what other means um, might be appropriate to, to contact that student, for example, through residential life, if they're in university halls, um, through their accommodation, through social media, etc. Um, if we have any serious concerns about a student's well-being, um, then we've also got the option of escalating that case to the university advice and response team. Um, and uh, at the moment, we're just waiting for some further guidance from them um, on the sort of criteria for, for referring cases um, up to them. Um, so that's that's the process kind of in a nutshell. And um, our experiences of running this over the past week have actually been very positive. Um, and we've managed to kind of resolve some IT issues um, for students, which were kind of preventing them from engaging with Blackboard. Um, so it seems to be working fairly well at the moment. And that's just been with the undergraduate students. We haven't started running it yet for the postgrads. Great, thank you, Janice. Um, we'll, we'll move straight on to, to Liz now, I think, who's gonna talk a bit more about academic advising and student wellbeing. Okay, thank you, Martin. Um, I think I've unmuted myself, yes, I have, good. Um, good afternoon, everyone. Uh, I've got five minutes to talk to you about student wellbeing and academic advising. And looking back at Gemma mentioning the six ways to wellbeing for staff, I thought the most useful one for us to think about currently is the theme from the six ways of well-being of connection, particularly social connection. So that's probably one of the hardest to enact for our students at the moment in the university's tier three lockdown and the current lockdown in Manchester. I'm just going to paste a couple of links around connection and well-being for your students that you may wish to share with them. I'll just put that into the chat 
from now. Um, I think for all students, uh, but perhaps particularly for first year undergrads and new international arrivals, I think being a connecting, connecting and belonging is more important than ever and more difficult than ever. Um, I live alone, so I know how hard it has been at times during lockdown. So, and I'm surrounded by colleagues, friends, family. So putting myself in the shoes of a, an 18 year old undergrad arriving, a new international arriving in Manchester, and then struggling to connect and feel like, like they belong to the university in these circumstances must be pretty challenging. So to think really now in terms of our role as academic advisors and how we can help to make those students feel connected to us. And the university is the institution, but it's really the people, it's us. And so it's more important than ever in our roles that we are reaching out to our students, our advisees, checking in on them, sharing the links to resources and support that we've got. Um, Janice did mention just in her um, presentation just then about the, the tragic death of one of our students, which was reported in the media this weekend. Um, let's give him his name, Finn. I don't know anything about Phil's context, but it shows the stakes and the human costs can be really high if a student moves off grid or struggles or is anxious. And so as academic advisors, we're part of that safety net and alert system as well as that safety net and alert system that Janice has just referred to through the student support team. So us being able to check on them, letting them know we're thinking about them, that we're there for them is, is really important at the moment. Um, currently faculty has not specified how often academic advisors are to check in, um, in on your advisees. Some of you may just have a few, some of you may have a lot, and um, some of you may feel you can do a weekly, hi, how are you? Some of you may think fortnightly would work well with your contacts. But just again, so that they know that, uh, that we're, we're thinking of them and that we can check in. And as Janice said, should we have concerns, we need to escalate that to the student support team to explore further. To support you in this role, I'll continue to provide links through Liz's links uh, because new resources, new services are coming up all the time. And I've been doing a webinar with colleagues once a month since September uh, to support you in your academic role and the student wellbeing. So the first one in September is, um, is online now. And that really was introducing you all to all the range of support staff um, who are able to help with um, students and the, the resources and welfare. Um, last week, we delivered a webinar on wellbeing for international students. Um, and that again is online on StaffNet. And I'm just going to copy now, and paste both of those in, if you uh, want to catch up on those webinars, there we go. Two more coming up. There's a November one, and uh, that's about the Academic Advisors Toolkit. And there's also one in December about the counselling services. So look out for those as well. Uh, in addition, there's now um, a chat, a check-in and chat service that's been opened for students who are self-isolating. So that might be worth you sharing with your students. And some links to student wellbeing. I'm just going to copy those too. There's also a digital wellbeing workshop for staff. I think we could all do with that. I think uh, the amount of times our computers are crashing at the moment and video is not recording, it's probably driving us all a little bit mad. So there's a few links there that are really useful, but stuff's coming online all the time. So um, just keep an eye on those, those Liz's links and um, we'll, we'll keep you in touch with any, anything new that helps you in that way. Okay, thanks, Martin. Brilliant, thanks, Liz. Um, okay, we'll move. We'll move straight on. Um, David, you're going to say a few words about. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Uh, thanks, uh, and thanks to uh, Liz and Janice there because uh, they're doing really important work. But I want to just focus quickly on e-learning. Mark uh, Shepherd isn't here, so I'm just covering for him really in trying to establish where we are and to pick up any queries and questions. So if you have any queries or questions about e-learning, can you put them in the chat or direct them to myself or to Mark, and then we'll pick them up. But briefly, uh, I'll, I'll pull in Helen Perkins in a moment, but I wanted to just go through a few items. Firstly, because some people have reported issues 
with regards to students in China and access to Blackboard and Collaborate. As far as I know, this has been resolved. But again, if you think there is still an issue uh, with students, can you let me know uh, so we can follow that up? But Mark sent out some guidance last week, which hopefully clarified that issue. Also, Janice referred to it a moment ago about students' access to Wi-Fi and to uh, hardware. So Help Me Get Online is still available as far as I know. And again, any students who are struggling, please escalate that either to the Director of Teaching and Learning so they can come contact me, or uh, we'll pick it up with Janice's team as well so that we can actually make sure that all students have got access to um, hardware and Wi-Fi. In relation to Wi-Fi, we're getting reports of students where there's multiple students in a household and it's just simply draining the Wi-Fi and they all can't get online at any one time. So the solution where possible is that they use study space on campus. The information so far is quite mixed in that we, we've got students who are using it but not ex extensively using it. But all the availability of study space is listed on the library. So if students want to access study space, then they should do so. What's become apparent is there's a mixture needed as in quiet study space and then engagement study space. So students can access a space where they can actually talk in their lectures and with other students. So that is on the cards. Also, uh, I've raised the issue today about access to study space over weekends and particularly when we get to exam periods. So again, if you think this is an issue, please just escalate that because these are new problems for us. We hopefully have clarified the issue of recording lectures and again, information has been sent out. But again, if you think there's an issue in relation to that, can you let me know? We are also taking a, uh, a kind of, I was going to say a temperature check, it's probably not the right terminology, but we're taking a check next week, uh, sorry, this week or next week, a pulse survey just to make sure students are accessing their uh, academic advisors they can access Blackboard, that they feel part of the university, that they feel safe if they're able to get on campus. So that, that survey is, is being finalised at the moment and is due to go out imminently so that we can get some uh, further feedback. And then one final uh, area we're getting uh, a decision made is on online exams. So we're just finalising the arrangements for online examinations for the end of the semester. I'm going to hand over now to Helen, who is going to now uh, talk about e-learning support from SEED. I'll just share my screen if that's OK. Um, OK, can everyone see that? OK, press on. Um, so uh, I'll, I'll run through things quickly. Um, some good news to start with. Um, so for the last couple of years, we've been a team of three. So Mark um, and then Johnny and myself as e-learning technologists with particular responsibility for SEED um, with a bit of um, reshuffling within the faculty team and some recruitment. We've now got two extra people helping us out in SEED. So that should um, mean that we can get more work done, get work done quicker. Um, so that's all good news. Um, in terms of support, at the minute, it's fairly kind of faculty based um, because we need to help as many people as we can um, and as quick as we can. Um, the first kind of port of call, really, if you've got an urgent query, is our drop in room. And I'll pop all the links into the chat afterwards. Um, so it's open Monday to Friday, nine to five, pop in if you've got a query that you need urgent help with or you just need us to demo something for you, come along there. Um, anything that's not super urgent can go into the support centre. Uh, if you're thinking about developing semester two units in kind of uh, in terms of the, the faculty principles and guidelines, we run one to one learning design sessions um, and there's also the humanities Teaching Academy website. Something I didn't put on there was the Yammer group, the Talon Teaching and Learning Online Yammer group. <coughs> Excuse me. So I'll put that in the chat links as well. Um, training. We offer lots of training, stuff that's running all the time. So in our call tools, Collaborate, Spark, VoiceThread, you can book onto those. 
We also do training by request um, and we're starting to develop some self-paced online courses as well. So um, you can access those. In terms of what we're doing specifically for SEED, um, we are open to coming to departmental meetings. We're going to be going to geography tomorrow and we can do that across the school. So if you want us to pop along to any department, department meetings, we can do. We have the Blackboard Good Practice Space. Um, we provide support for unit and programme development. Uh, in terms of projects, we're not entirely sure how semester two is going to be running yet, um, but hopefully we'll have some time to do some more kind of dedicated um, and proactive teaching and learning projects, again, focused on those faculty principles. So if you've got ideas or things that you really want to focus on in uh, semester two, do let us know. Um, David mentioned uh, online exams and we provide support for set up for those. We provide live chat support for students during the exam period itself. Um, and obviously we continue to provide Turnitin and Feedback Studio support should you need it. Um, and there's just our Twitter there. Um, a final thing is that we, um, we have been focusing on supporting our teaching colleagues so for the last few months. But we are still supporting our PS colleagues. So if there are um, uh, training requirements, you want um, us to come along to any uh, meetings that you have within your PS teams, please do let us know um, and we'll be able to come along and support you best we can. OK, that's okay, brilliant. Thanks, Ellen. Thanks, David. Um, OK, uh, we've got 20 minutes left, so we'll, we'll go just to um, Questions on, on any of those um, presentations or, or anything else that, that uh, you want to ask about. Um, I think we can, you can put your hand up or you can you can ask questions through the chat and, and Kay is going to try and um, marshal the traffic, I think. Yes, thank you, Martin. Um, I'll go right back to the beginning. There's lots in the chat there, lots of useful links. Um, but what I'd like to do, I'll go back and I'll start start from the beginning. First of all, from from Abby Stone, who's thanked um, everybody in, in Jan from Janice and all her team for the hard work around engagement. Um, uh, but Abby, you've got a question. Would you would you like to ask? Yes, th um, thank you very much. Um, just uh, seeing the new guidelines for this semester for Mit Cirques, um, I had one very specific question: the self certification form for seven days of either illness or IT trouble says no evidence is required. The guidelines for staff say that the engagement stuff should fit with their engagement with Blackboard. So I think clarifying that message for staff and for students, evidence or not evidence, and this being told that they don't, but behind the scenes we might be checking on their engagement. I just think we need to line that up so it's perfectly clear for students, staff and panels. That's a that's a good point, actually, Abby. Yeah, we'll um, we'll uh, pick that up. I'll pick that up with Kelly actually afterwards in relation to students and uh, certainly from a staff perspective. Um, I think it should be relatively clear on self certification, etc. Um, but thank you, thank you for that. Um, I'm just going to trawl through the the chat here because there's lots of helpful information that I think um, Lorna will also extract out and send round to uh, to everybody. Um, a question from B Hughes, uh, which was, can the library extend opening hours beyond 5 p.m. as it would help first year students who will voice their concerns about access to study spaces in the evening? Um, David, do you have any um, particular in information about the library? Uh, I didn't realise it was it was closing at five. So if that's correct, then I can pass that on because, um, yeah, that would seem to be an issue. I don't know what, I mean, again, obviously, because we're a tier three, some of the activities <laughs> will be getting reduced, but equally, that's at a time when we probably need some of these activities the most. So I, I can check. One of the things I've just come from a meeting was about this, and they're going to get some information about actually when the library is open and the study space. So effectively, we're pushing for that all the time. Perhaps I could just quickly chip in there. So I think that a meeting I was at fairly recently, the library was saying that they are planning to flex their provision um, in response to demand. And at the moment, the demand is not what they thought it would be. Um, so if, if, if student demand emerges, if we get more students on campus, then the library have, have committed to, to make more spaces available for them. 
and, and presumably also more times. Thank you, Martin. Um, sorry, Jen, I missed out your question. Um, so I'll, I'll, I'll go I'll, uh, repeat your question here. So uh, Jen O'Brien has mentioned that uh, we struggled uh, to keep lists of academic advisors up to date um, and to match to campus solutions. Uh, currently, um, they're using a spreadsheet, which is currently version 10. Um, uh, could we consider a better way to do this, please? Uh, students are already falling through the gaps, plus it is taking a lot of time for PS and academic colleagues. I think that's a really good question, actually. Um, I don't know whether to, to target that. First of all, I don't know whether, Liz, you've got any, any thoughts. Yeah. Um, I think the last report, Susie Edwards compiles a report from Campus Solutions, and for undergrads in SEED, they were all matched to an academic advisor bar seven and Susie Edwards was exploring that. Janice may have an update on that. But obviously the, the postgrads who've just arrived now, they'll be in the process of being assigned to their advisors. So I think that it might be good for us, Jen, to speak to Susie Edwards or Janice uh, regarding that and then maybe may be able to help her establish just in case maybe the seven that are missing are some of those that she's referring to. Oh, that's helpful. Thank you. Janice, I don't know, do you want to add anything um, additionally to that? Um, if not, that's not a problem. We can check in with Jen afterwards. Oh, you're on mute, Janice. Sorry, I haven't been involved in the um, allocations, so it's probably better if Jen speaks to Susie actually about that, so that we can try and match up the, the two sets of data and make sure that Camp Solutions is correct. Okay, that would be, be great. Thank you. Um, one from uh, Jacko to uh, David. Um, with PGT registration now open until the end of November, uh, do we have a position on the intellectual property being generated at the moment? Uh, students could potentially walk away with five weeks of materials without paying anything. So this may be one of the consequences of us both having a late registration and also guest access that materials will be available to students. Um, the, the, the answer is that the material belongs to the university, so I don't think students would be entitled to take that, but equally, I don't know how we would stop that. I can raise it as an issue. I don't know if anyone's got any solutions for that. Obviously okay. not. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I don't think so, unless anyone wants to raise their hands. Um, um, I think as well, Karen, you asked for a link to the library study space bookings, and I think Martin has provided that for you. Um, I think that's all we've got so far, question wise. Um, I do encourage anyone to put their hand up or add anything else into the, the chat room. Please do. We've got 10 minutes left. Oh, and Helen, uh, thank you, Helen Perkins, she's just clarified, she'll raise Jacko's issue with uh, the e-learning team as well. Um, and she may need a little bit more info, um, so we'll contact you, Jacko, um, if she does. Um, Andreas, uh, clear statements on lecture slides, recorded videos about intellectual property might be an option. Um, thank you, Andreas, that's very helpful. Anybody uh, else? She's got a question, so I've just uh, moved her camera. Oh, thank you. Yes, I can see the blue hands now. Thank you, Doby. Thanks, Kate. Uh, thanks, everybody. And thank you for the team for supporting us and the students. It's vital at this time. My question is a rather a concern, and I'm not sure there's a right answer to it. But um, after several conversations as an academic advisor to undergraduate year one students who are sensing and fe feeling uh, considerable isolation, and lack of connectivity with others, particularly identifying and participating in visiting the university. Uh, and uh, the library issue is an important one because I think they, they desperately need a sense of getting into the university uh, and a sense of space and a sense of being together in some respects. Now I know that's highly problematic given where we are, but the, you know, the library may help if they extend their open hours. They're open from 10 till 5, and the central library is open from 10 till 4 at the moment, and this student couldn't get anywhere to get in and study with a, a, a colleague. Um, now, the wider issue for me uh, is student well-being and this sense of connectivity with others. Uh, and I don't know what the answer is, but I think the library, whether we could open up more spaces, whether we could open up Lime Cafe, I know that's highly problematic. 
uh, but it's just this sense of isolation in rooms that they're experiencing. I don't mean they're self-isolating, uh, but there's a certain um, tension between um, learning, sleeping, socialising uh, and eating in their rooms. And it does concern me rather. Million observation, Kay, rather than a question. <laughs> Yeah, no, that's really helpful, actually, Be I don't know whether anybody else wants to add into that at all. It's, it is a, you know, th there are lots of ongoing discussions around this. I know that David will be discussing it at teaching and learning committees, etc. Um, and it's Kate, helpful Kate. to have that. Sorry, Kate. Um, yeah, so uh, again, I've just come from a meeting and um, I hope this will help. But there's going to be some funding made available for programmes to support communities and community development uh, of groups. So that's coming through from faculty. Literally just got the information just just a moment ago. So hopefully that can help. And I, mean, I think one of the things, like all all of these issues, is academic advisors and colleagues knowing what is available. Often I'm overwhelmed by just how much is going on. So peer pits to support the the information that Liz has sent out. There's a lot of this information who's deliberately there to support students stopping them being isolated. Uh, but equally. Uh, you know, again, hopefully we can get some funding that can can push that out. And the student union are doing huge as a huge amount of uh, activity to encourage stuff to be taking place online and supporting students where they can. And the campus is still open. Thank you, David. Um, yeah, that's a really good point. It, it is just encouraging students, isn't it? And reminding them that campus is open uh, and pointing them in the, in the right direction of what's available where. Um, and we can't do that enough, really. I think we can't. You know, we shouldn't worry about repeating um, information. We should keep it flowing out there. Abby, you have another question. Yes, thank you. Um, I think we've got a, a minority, thankfully, but a small number of students who seem to be slightly falling through the gap with what is provided with Help Me Online, with the criteria in terms of financial need and th this problem, particularly with shared Wi-Fi in, in houses. Um, perhaps the study space will will help a little. But I wondered, is there is there anything else we can do in terms of widening the Help Me Online kind of scheme and, and, and budget? Because um, I do have a, quite a lot of students intermittently just falling off calls for live lectures and, and seminars because their Wi-Fi simply can't support it. David. Okay, if I can just add to that then, Kate. Of so, course, yeah. um, um, yeah, I think it's it, there's a couple of things. One is us building it into our mindset that actually, no matter where a student is going to be, we need to be kind of mindful of the fact that some students will be having difficulty accessing and therefore what we can record and making it available. Also, in the meeting, again, I've just had earlier, um, the, the time scale for exams, trying to make, maximize that so that if students are having access difficulties, that the, the maximum amount of time that we've got available to allow students to have examinations. And we've just been talking about the design of examinations and design of assessments. So again, it's trying to build that in. I mean, I think, again, this is a new space that we're all occupying and we're trying to make some sense of it. And it's pitching in. Alex has just made a uh, a, a pitch for his group that he's been looking at in terms of building online communities as well. So we're trying to develop our expertise and keep sharing that information. Either send it to me, program direct, sorry, um, director of teaching and learning or Liz, and we can disseminate that information if people come up with ideas and uh, ways of solving these problems. Thank you, David. Um... Um, Richard has, has made a point as well. Uh, most home hubs have Ethernet sockets uh, in the back. Um, you can get a 10 to 20 meter cable for about £10, apparently, which improves connectivity. Um, so that's a, a top tip. From okay, there, there has Thank been you. some discussion about um, actually purchasing cables for, for students that need them as well. So that, that might well be part of the, the Get Me Online as well. Well, that's very, yeah, that's very helpful. Um, and Sarah has mentioned that dongles are also um, very cheap as well. Um, although I know we have had a few issues with dongles, certainly for, for staff who have been using them as well, that they're not not the not the best. So I think it depends which ones you you get. I think and what data connectivity um, you actually have set up as well. Uh, but thank you, Sarah. I think that is helpful. Um, I think we have five minutes left. If there are no other questions, um, um, 
Oh, I'm sorry, Richard, Richard just mentioned if all else fails, I can leave my webcam on looking out from uh, my home office if people need to see some proper Yorkshire countryside. Uh, it's very, very helpful indeed, Richard. Blue sky um, in South Yorkshire at the moment, Sheffield. Um, um, <laughs> Richard, sorry. <laughs> Um, well, I will. I think that might be about it. Actually, I don't know whether to hand back to Martin just to close um, the meeting. Uh, please do. If anyone does have any uh, additional questions, please do send them through to uh, to Lorna is probably the best uh, contact um, or certainly myself or Martin uh, will collate anything and we will answer any additional questions. And we will be sending out all those incredibly helpful links um for, that everybody's provided today i think it's been a fantastic um set of presentations as well thank you so over to you martin okay um thank well thanks to all of you for taking the time to show up thank you to the presenters um for um setting out some some useful information uh, for us and, and thank you to everybody for all the efforts you've been making to kind of support students and and kind of deliver an education um in incredibly difficult circumstances um I'm, I'm hearing good good feedback from students so um you know some of it's clearly going really well uh, we've got another another set of challenges over the next two or three weeks as we as we try to integrate what's hopefully quite a large number of um, pgt students many of them overseas about half of those actually in manchester and, and the other half um it looks like online so um there's a lot more hard work to come, but, but thank you for everything that you've you've done to date. Um, and uh, well, it's gone well so far. We'll we'll get there, I think. Okay, thanks everybody.